Hi Notion is. As you've probably already seen, Notion's just launched some brand new project management functionality for us, which introduces some really useful features if you work with sprints in your Notion project management system. The good news is it includes functionality like this button here, which allows you to just click a button on your task database and mark all of your tasks as complete in the current sprint or move the incomplete tasks to the next sprint. The bad news is this functionality is currently only available in the databases which are included in the new templates which Notion has created, which feature some enhanced databases with these features. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what you can do with this new functionality and also walk you through a template which I've made using those enhanced databases, which add a little bit more functionality to the templates that Notion has created because one of the big elements that's missing from Notion's templates, for example, are dashboard pages, which would allow you to display one view of projects and tasks for managers and separate views of those tasks and projects and sprints databases for team members so that people in different roles can work with the items in those databases in views which are appropriate for the context that they're working with them in. I'll start by focusing on the new functionality and then if you're interested stick around and I'll walk you through the template and just give you some tips on how you should probably think about setting up your own Notion workspace with these new databases even if you don't use the template itself. But before I get into that, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room because there is a question of whether or not you should migrate from your existing project management system if you already have these databases set up for projects and tasks, for example, to the new enhanced databases, or if you should just wait for Notion to add this functionality to the regular databases. And they have said that they will add the sprints functionality to regular databases once the beta has finished for sprints but you probably also received an email like me from Ivan Notion CEO a little bit earlier today sharing some of the upcoming functionality that Notion is planning to add on top of these features that we're getting today and in particular they mentioned that there will be a new task section in your workspace where you can see all tasks across your projects so basically a consolidated view of your tasks databases if you have several of those in your workspace and my guess is that's going to be a little bit harder for them to implement for the existing databases and so if you don't have your system set up using these enhanced databases then I think you might be waiting a little while before you get access to that functionality too, which is obviously pretty valuable. So in order to migrate to the new enhanced databases, you basically need to configure them so that you have a set of properties that match the configuration of the properties in your existing databases. And then you will be able to drag and drop your pages from one database to another to move them. The only thing that will break there is you will lose the link between your projects and tasks, which is obviously quite a big uh, link to potentially break. There are ways to automate the migration and preserve that data, but I would need to go through that in another video. So get in touch with me if that's something that you would need my help with, but that's definitely something that's worth considering. If you're setting up your project management system in Notion from scratch, then definitely make sure that you start with the new enhanced databases from Notion's template or my copy of the template and then customize those even if there's a lot of functionality in those databases that you're not planning to use initially, just so that you don't run into any limitations in the near future. And while we're here, it's also pretty exciting to see that there will also be new automations to trigger actions as task details change. Again, specifically talking about task details there. So I'm hoping that that's not a feature that's going to be limited to these task databases specifically initially, but we will have to wait and see. So first of all, if we go into my Notion page here and just open up the sidebar, I've got a slightly cleaner sidebar than you might do right now um, for this recording, but basically you just need to go to the template section of your sidebar, which is usually right at the bottom of the sidebar. You might have to scroll a little bit. If you click on that, you will see two uh, templates here, which both feature the enhanced databases. The first one is this slightly more straightforward template which just includes projects and tasks. And then this other template here includes projects, tasks, and sprints. 
what will happen if you duplicate these templates into your workspace using this button is first of all, you'll need to choose a team space to put the templates in. And then the individual databases, so projects, tasks, and sprints will all appear in your team space as separate pages on the left hand side. So if we do that now, we can just choose uh, my A Notion here team space. Uh, if you've already got the databases installed, then it will tell you not to uh, copy the template back into the same team space again, which is generally pretty good advice. You usually just want to have one master database for each of the databases in your team space or generally in your workspace as well. Um, and so this is my team space here for a notion here where I've just copied the template. If we just hide those other team spaces, then you can see we've got task projects and sprint board and then also sprints. So the downside of the approach that Notion has taken to adding these databases to your team space is that if you don't customize this at all, you're going to be clicking in and out of projects and tasks and sprints in order to view the items in those different databases, when really what you want is a single sort of summary page to work in, which gives you access to items from all of those databases in one go. So that if you need to check your projects and then check the tasks and maybe add a task to a project, you can just do that from a single page rather than having to navigate in and out of those pages. So that's one of the features that I've included in my template. So if we open up my template now, first of all, what you'll see at the top of the page here is this sprints database view. First of all, just to explain sprints in case you're not so familiar with them, Basically, the idea of a sprint is it's a block of time when you plan to uh, complete a certain number of tasks. Maybe you want to launch a new feature if you're uh, working in the engineering team or add a new page to your website uh, in that time. And the idea is that you will fill that time with as many tasks as you know that you should have the capacity to complete um, so that you can more easily say, we're definitely going to have all of these pieces done uh, within that time frame. And if you don't manage to complete all of the tasks within that time frame, then you know that you sort of need to reevaluate your process for estimating how long things will take. And then you can use that knowledge when you're planning your next sprint to more accurately predict exactly how much you can get done. So at the top of my template here, uh, we've got this view of our new sprints database. The Sprints database itself doesn't look that different to any of your other regular databases. This is just a table view with the vertical lines hidden, but we've got a few different views of this database. We've got upcoming in a table view there, uh, current, next and future, as well as past groups for our sprints. And these are actually new options that you will see by default when you're looking at your Sprints database. Um, they're basically using the status property from Notion here. But as you can see, these options are grayed out because we already have a sprint for the current sprint and the next sprint. So you can only add sprints for the future now. And I'll show you some more of that functionality in a minute. We also have properties here for uh, the start and end date for the sprint, the number of completed tasks for this sprint so far. And then I've added this sprint duration property here so that we can compare how long we have left in the sprint or how much of the time that we set aside for the sprint has been completed versus the number of tasks that have been completed. So we can see we're a little bit ahead of where we need to be by comparing these two uh, figures right there. Inside these pages, we've also got templates for uh, sprint, for example, which display the tasks which are linked to your sprint. And that's one of the features that's included in Notion's default template. And and then we've got the regular timeline view here as well and this all view here too. Next up we've got the projects database and my default view for this in the template is a timeline view which just shows you incomplete projects. By default you've got these swim lanes here for in progress and then if you had any uh, projects in the to-do status as well then they would show up there too. We're linking these projects together to show that there's dependencies between them and I've just left the default uh, pages which were created when I duplicated this template in my version of the template because they probably have some useful content inside them when you're getting started with this template. Next, we just have an active view of our projects. Again, just grouped by stage, so pretty straightforward. The mind view here just shows you projects which uh, you're the owner of. This is using the me filter to only display the items which are assigned to the person who's viewing the page. And then we have this all view here 
which includes the nice new summary AI property, which is just fetching a summary of the description of the project from inside the project page itself, which is quite cool. And then lastly, we have this task database down here with a few different views of our tasks as well. First of all, we're using the new sprint status options to display tasks which are in the current sprint and tasks which are in the next sprint. I've hidden the backlog group here um, and also uh, upcoming sprints, which are sprint three, sprint four, etc., just to keep this view nice and clean. The idea of this main page here is that it gives uh, anyone who wants to check on projects and tasks a good summary of everything that's going on, but it's not really intended to be used to actually work on those projects and tasks. I'll show you the dashboard pages, which are set up for that purpose in a second. Uh, we've got some quick filters at the top of these views here to make it easy for you to find particular tasks based on whatever criteria you're looking for. And then we also have views which are grouped by project and by a signee, which you can use to get a good sense of how much capacity each person in the team has to work on new tasks at the moment. Then we've got this all view here, which gives you a nice summary of all of the tasks that have been completed, as well as tasks which are being worked on right now. So let's have a look at the sprint planning dashboard page, which actually displays the views from the sprint board page, which was created when we duplicated our copy of Notions template into our team space a little bit earlier in the video. And at the top of the page here, we've just got a nice clean view of our sprints, uh, both in a timeline view um, and also in this table view here for your reference. But the main view, which is the one that contains most of the new functionality, is this task view. And if you're very perceptive, then you will have already spotted that there's this new button in the top right hand corner of this view here. And this allows us to complete our sprint. So when we click on that, uh, we can set new start and end dates for our next sprint. And we can also choose whether we want to move the incomplete tasks, which are currently in this sprint, into the next sprint so that we can complete them then into our backlog so that we can triage them again and choose whether we want to include them in our next sprint or if we want to just keep them in our current sprint and leave them there. So if we click complete sprint one, then you're gonna see this view update. And this view here has been renamed for us automatically to indicate that we're now looking at sprint two. So that's quite a nice feature as well. We're now seeing that we've got four tasks which are currently incomplete for this sprint, and we're ready to start working on this next sprint. I'm just gonna undo that change now that you've seen how that functionality works to keep things simple. And the next view that we want to take a look at is this sprint planning view here. And this gives you easy access to all of your tasks, whether they're in the current sprint and maybe they just need to be dragged to the next sprint, or if they're in the backlog and you want to add them to the next sprint to schedule them, then you can do that there. And obviously, as soon as you click that complete sprint button, next sprint is gonna become the current sprint and those next tasks will be scheduled for you. So, before this was an option, I used to have to set up these pages with different linked database views to display our backlog and then drag pages from the backlog into the swim lane for the next sprint, which was actually just another page in our sprints database. And that was a much more clunky process. So I really appreciate Notion adding this functionality. Lastly, just to quickly show you, if you're an engineer or a developer and you would like to be able to link your GitHub pull requests to tasks in your task database so that when the pull request is merged, the status of your task is updated, you've got this new GitHub pull request property here, which you can use to connect your GitHub repository with your Notion task database. The only thing to bear in mind there is if you have an ID property in your task database and the prefix doesn't match the format which was automatically assigned when you first duplicate this template from Notion, then you won't have the option to configure that property because your task IDs need to have a certain prefix in order for GitHub to automatically recognize them. So if you end up customizing your ID property, then you might need to change the prefix or just delete it uh, before you go to add that new property there. 
but that can be quite helpful as well. So those are basically all of the features that are included with the new database functionality. Now I'll quickly show you how I've set up the manager's project management dashboard and the team members dashboard to make this system easier to work with. So first of all, if we go into our manager's project management dashboard page here, we've got two toggles at the top of the page containing our sprints and our projects database views here. These are basically the same views that we had when we were looking at the main summary page and they're just there for easy access. They're inside toggles so that they don't get in the way if you're working on tasks or managing your team's tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we have a view of the task database where the default view is grouped by assignee so that you can really easily see all of the tasks that different members of your team are working on, assign them new tasks, update those tasks, and as I mentioned before, get a good sense of your different team members' capacity and workload. There's also views which are grouped by project. There's a mine view of the task database here because obviously you'll be working with your own tasks as well as part of the system. And then there's an all task view here, which again shows you all tasks from the task database. Next, if we go into the team members dashboard page, we've got a slightly different view of the databases from the system. At the top of the page here, we've got this view of sprints, which just shows you the current sprint by default. We're seeing the from and to dates for that sprint, current duration uh, with that percentage indicator there and the percentage of completed tasks again. Then we have a nice and compact view of projects sitting alongside our sprints so that we can keep an eye on the projects that we're supposed to be working on here. This view is sorted by date uh, in ascending order. So the projects that are due to be started first are at the top of the list. And then we've also got a view of all projects just here in case you need to have easy access to the rest of the projects that are going on as well. Then we have our view of the task database where the mine view is the default view. So this gives you a nice and uncluttered view of the tasks that you need to be working on without the rest of the tasks that the rest of the team is working on being displayed in this view as well and potentially getting in the way a little bit. Then we have the same database view but grouped by projects so that you can quickly see tasks which you need to be working on for particular projects. And lastly, we have this all view here with lots of nice quick filters at the top of the view so that you can quickly find tasks that you might have completed in the past or you, if you just want to search and see what everyone else is working on, then you can do that there as well. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of what you can do with the new functionality and how you can organize the components of this new system a little bit more easily than you would if you were just using Notion's default template out of the box. Just to mention a couple of quick tips. Don't forget that you can now configure precise triggers for Slack notifications for your Notion databases. So for example, if you wanted to add a trigger so that whenever a task was marked as complete, it was sent to the manager of the team or someone in particular, maybe just a general shared channel so that you can check up on that task or at least see that it was completed easily. You can do that now. And once this database is connected with Slack, that will send a summary of that task when those trigger criteria are met. And speaking of Slack, if you want to be able to assign tasks to team members, submit requests to your IT or your HR or your legal team, or just add feature requests to your backlog from Slack, uh, and feed those into your task database in Notion, for example, then you can do that using my Slack app called Sortero. You can sign up for a seven day free trial and then it's $10 per month per company, not per user. So definitely give that a try as well. So I hope that was helpful. Just let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments and stick around because I will be sharing more templates, tips, and I'll probably get back to my automations and sharing those with you on this channel in the near future as well.